Let's declare together, I am deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. You are deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. We are deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. Hallelujah. One more time, I am deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. Look at somebody, you are deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. Together, we are deeply loved. Greatly blessed and highly favored. Hallelujah. Three things very important. Love God, love people, love life. Tell somebody, love God, love people, love life. One more time. Love God, love people, love life. One more time. Love God, love people, love life. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. Thank you, worship team. Let's give them a hand too. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yesterday was a very, very wonderful day. We had about 16 candidates got baptized. And these are the baptismal candidates. Let's give them a hand. Amen. Every quarterly, we have got people get baptized. Why do I especially make announcement not to boast about the number of people getting baptized? But they are not numbers. They are souls that is one in the kingdom of God. Most importantly, they are following the Great Commission teaching, you know, get baptized and be a disciple of Jesus. I was there to watch and to hear the testimony and all of them basically say the same thing and that they have come to know Jesus, they want to give their heart to Jesus, they want to follow Jesus. Even those who are about 20 years old, uh, 22 years old, you know, and of course, there are some who are below at about 18. But all in all, all of them, they are saying the same thing. I want to give my heart, my life to Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. Give them a hand, okay? We have got from the English service, Mandarin service, as well as the Hokkien service. Amen. And I jokingly talked to this brother, a new one that come to know the Lord. I said, do you have a, a Christian name? And she said, no, 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 I don't have one. He speaks Mandarin. Uh. Then I said, I will give you one, Stephen, you know. I say, someday uh, you carry the name Stephen, God's anointing is upon you and your God will use you greatly. Uh. I was teasing. Hopefully the next round when I see him, he call himself Stephen. Uh. Praise the Lord. But it was such a joyous time. Come to know and come to experience to see the harvest came in. It's not so simple, you know. In the 70s, uh, just to get one person baptized, we have to wait for weeks and months. And even then, the person may not show up because of persecution. That time, during that era, a lot of persecution from the family members. Huh? But praise God, you know, the grace of God prevailed. And so every quarterly, we have got people willing to give their hearts to the Lord, including the Nepalese. I hope you know that last Sunday, we had about, I think... 30 Indonesian, at least about 30 over Indonesian, that they came to our church first time to attend the Nepalese service, but they have to interpret it from Nepalese to Bahasa Indonesia. Okay? God is moving. God is moving and He has appointed benefits over nations and kingdom. People are coming in, you know, from Indonesia, from Nepal, and we, we have gone over to Myanmar border as well as Laos border to scout the land and also to get to know the people there, the leaders there, to preach the gospel. Over nations and kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's bow our head and pray. Father, we thank you for the calling that you have placed upon the body of Christ here. And Lord, you have appointed us over nations and kingdom. We thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, that truly the name of Jesus, which is above every other name, nothing can satisfy the hearts of men. And Lord, the hunger of men. And Lord, we want to thank you that only Jesus can satisfy. Hallelujah. He is able to save. He is able to heal. He is able to de deliver. He is able to set, Lord, uh, bondages free. We thank you. We praise you. So we commit this time to your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Christmas is just around the corner. And we are living, you know, it's like towards the end of 2023. And soon it will be 2024. And the thought that I had in my mind was, Lord, how did the year just pass by so fast for the year 2023? You know, what shall we do? The thought that came to me was redeeming the time. 
So let's read from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14 to verse 17. Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Wow. You know, just three verses itself. Paul is telling the Ephesian Christian, that means to say, hey, you know, time is running short. Therefore, in view of the fact that time is running short, make every opportunity of your time now as a believer. Now, what actually Paul was trying to tell the Ephesian Christian? Very simple. Ephesians has got six chapters. The first three chapters, he talk about the redemptive plan, the grand plan of how God wants to redeem the world. You know, and it was God who designed the entire redemptive plan. That's the reason why Paul explained to the Ephesian Christian, he says that, you know, you will never be able to understand until you have the Spirit of God inside you, the length, the breadth, the depth, the height, considering the love of God. And how even before the foundations of the earth was laid, how God has already chosen you. Okay? The theological term is predestinate. God has already chosen you. God has chosen every one of us even before he, this universe come into place. In the mind of God, he has already seen every one of us. And so he talked about this grand plan of redemption. Okay? Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Uh, and he explained that in Christ Jesus, okay, the love of God is so great, it's so real, it's so powerful. And he wants to reach out to all of us who are sinners. So now that we are born again, then let's switch to chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6. Now, I just want to highlight chapter 6 a little bit first before I go to chapter 4. Chapter 6, all of us are familiar about the armor of God, right? Put on the whole armor of God, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the, the, the gospel shoes, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, you know? And what he is trying to say is, in chapter 1, all of us, we were sinner. But in chapter 6, we, come, we become a mighty soldier, fully, fully clothed with the armor and ready to do the will of God and to fight the spiritual battle with the devil. Wow. Chapter 1 to chapter 6. What a transformation. It talks about what is not known. Eventually, it was revealed. And finally, we got redeemed in chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6. And at the end of the day, we become a mighty soldier for the Lord. Hallelujah. But somewhere in between, chapter 1 to chapter 3, then you reach chapter 4, Paul is saying something very, very important. He is talking about, you know, that which you must know your new calling. You must know your new identity. You must know who you are and how to make good use of the time that God has given to you. So he's talking about redeeming the time. Therefore, when we move into chapter 5, which I read to you just now, he says, therefore he says, he's talking about God is saying to the generations of Christians that got born again, okay, filled with the Spirit. And now it's being awakened within them, their spiritual hunger, their spiritual identity, their spiritual need. Awaken, you who are asleep. Arise from the dead. Don't live your life as though like you're dead. You know, your life produces jealousy, envy, hatred, you know, adultery, fornication, sensuality. No. He says, awake, you who sleep. Yes, once upon a time you were like that. But now, you got to wake up. And on, on top of that, arise from the dead. Put all these deeds behind. Why? Because now Christ has given you the light. Therefore, in verse 15, see then that you walk circumspectly, circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. To go back to the former way of life, to live like the world is being called fool. Or foolish. But now we have to do otherwise and be what God wants us to be, and we got to be wise, redeeming the time. Why? Because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand the will of God. 
The days are evil. As we look around us, it's not hard for us to come to uh, agree that the scripture says the days are evil. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6 to verse 8 tell us this, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes, and in various places. Wars and rumors of wars. And he says that all these are the beginning of sorrows. Who would ever thought of there is a war that is going on in Israel? You know, none of us. In fact, some of my friends, they sign up for the trip. They sign up for the trip uh, to go to Israel. And then when now that there is war in Israel, they couldn't go. Coming back, wars and rumors of war. It's very heart-wrenching to read about what's going on in Gaza. You know, we pray for shalom the peace of God to prevail. All this that happened in the Middle East are the beginning of sorrows. Evil time. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 to verse 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. The days of Noah. You know, the church is coming up with a drama called The Days of Noah. We choose this particular title and uh, the drama. It's long before the outburst of the Gaza war. But what's happening in Middle East, it's in fulfillment with the word of God. And that in the last day, the days of Noah, you know, so also will the coming of the Son of Man. What are the days of Noah? People are eating, drinking. Do you know that Malaysia has got Michelin restaurant now? But that's not the only one. Two days ago, they have come out with the second list. And now they have got double Michelin. Uh, everywhere you go, you know, people are talking about food, 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 you know, where you can get good food, there's nothing wrong. But sometimes it can be become, you know, the belly become God, you know, and their God become the belly, which the Bible talks about. They live to eat, not eat to live. You know what's the difference between to eat to live and live to eat? How many of us, we are here that we are live to eat? Can I see your hand? Ah, you're very sharp. You never put up your hand. Huh? Live to eat means you do nothing. You just eat, eat, eat. How many of you, you uh, eat to live? Can I see your hand? Half. The rest don't eat anything. They continue to live on. Wonderful. Uh, they live on fresh air and they live on sunshine. Very good. Fantastic. Uh, uh, but so the Bible says, as the days of Noah were, merry making, uh, eating, drinking, and as well as fornicating and all that, so will also be the coming of the Son of Man be. But as in the days of Noah, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. God was the one that closed the ark's door. It was not the engineering feat of Noah that he closes it. You know, God was the one that personally closed it. When God closes it, no one can open. Likewise, in your life, there are opportunities that God has given to you. You know, it is God who opened that door of opportunity for you because of His favor. Whether or not to get that contract or to end up to receive the employment or to end up, you know, for you to be at the top. Of the, of the management. It is the favor of God. But when God closes the door, no one can open it. Okay? And did not know until the flood came and took them away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. So reading these two portions of scripture, that it tell us that in Matthew 24, 6 to 8, it talks about wars, rumors of wars, and all these are the beginning of sorrows. And Matthew 24, verse 37 to verse 39, it talks about as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. We are living in this description. We are, in other words, we are living in Matthew 24, 6 to 8, and Matthew 24, 37, 39. If you take away the scripture, you don't interpret anything at all based on the scripture concerning the world event. The world event is just senseless. It doesn't make any sense. But when you interpret it with scripture, you begin to see that God's hand is upon the entire happening, what's going on in the world. It's moving towards one thing. These are the signs of the second coming of, of the Lord. So we are to, the scripture admonish us, we are to basically do this. 
redeem the time. Okay? Time is like something very special. Eh? When I was doing my secondary school, first time I came across this, it says that don't waste time because time and tides wait for no one. Don't waste time. Times and tide wait for no one. It's true. You know, when I first came across this, I happened to always like to go to Gurney Drive and Esplanade. That was a long, 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 long time ago. Before they developed the age, you know, and usually we are able to see how the tides roll in. In a split of a second, the tides rolled out. It comes, it goes. And then you understand that the very tide that comes in, by the time when it rolls back, it's a different tide. And the new one that came in, you know, it's a different one from the same, the, the, the old one that came in. Times and tides just wait for no one. It talks about how fast, you know, how fast these time and tides can be. Now, I came across this, I thought I want to share with you concerning the concept of time. Time is too slow for those who wait. Time is too swift for those who fear. Time is too long for those who grieve. Time is too short for those who rejoice. But for those who love, time is eternity. How true. How many of you know that God is the one that actually created seasons and time? That's right. God called the light day, Genesis chapter 1 verse 5, and then the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. So God is the one that created morning, evening, seasons of life, okay? Now, at the same time, we understand that there is everything, everything, there is a season, okay? Uh, In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 8, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 8, to everything there's a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break up and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain. A time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sew it back, a time to keep silent and a time to speak. This is something that we need to learn, many of us. Why is it we get into trouble? There's a saying, it goes, even the fish will get away from the trouble if it closes its mouth. But so often, the fish get into trouble is because the fish open the mouth and then bite the hook or bite the baits. Isn't that so? Uh, so many times we get ourselves into trouble is because we don't have to keep silent. Uh, no wonder there's a saying, it goes something like this. Silent is what? Golden. It's not banana. Okay? Silent is golden. A time to keep silent, a time to speak. A time to love, a time to hate. And the last one. I wish it come quickly. The second half of it. A time of war and a time of peace. There's a seasons for everything. But the scripture tells us just now as we were reading Ephesians, it says that redeem the times because the times are evil. Like it or not, you and I, we are living in such a time. The time is really evil. And we know that Jesus is coming back. We have to make sure that we are ready for that event that He is coming back. Therefore, we need to hear this message and learn how to redeem the time. The second reason we need to redeem the time is because it's found in James chapter 4, verse 13 to verse 17. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. Do we know what will happen tomorrow? No, we don't know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. So true. You don't feel it that way when you're in your primary school. Neither do you feel it when you're in your secondary school. 
And then when you're in your university, you don't even aware of it because you're surrounded by everyone is about 20-something, you know, from late teen to early 20s. It's the best time of everyone's life. So it's so far away about life is so short and brief. But here, it is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. But most will just carry on thinking that it will be forever. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord's will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your ignorance. The scriptures say, ignorant. People who think the life goes on and 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 on. There's like, there's no ending in this being ignorant. It can happen anytime. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Life is short. Whenever I preach in MMC, I always start with 26 McAllister Road. Somewhere right in the middle, the third row, there will be this sister who's seated there. Listen to the sermon attentively. And when we ended up in Hunza, same thing, you know, the sheep never change its good habit. Always sit same spot, somewhere around there. And then we move the MMC, the distance is wider, longer, but she still sits somewhere around that area. From an unknown person that I don't know her, 20 some years ago, eventually I got to know her. She's such a wonderful person. Wonderful person. Okay? And then she became really a friend. We discovered that she is somebody that loved the Lord. She loves to pray. She's honest. And then she has got an excellent spirit. And especially when she prayed over the, this uh, Zoom meeting, you know, you can see that she was just full of fire. And she's concerned about the salvation of her loved ones as well as her colleagues. Always come across very pleasant. Always come across very full of Christ-likeness. And suddenly, she was taken away from us. Can I have a picture of Sister Christina? I'm sure, how many of you, you know her? Can I see her hand? Can I see her hand? Such a wonderful sister. No, I'm not talking about I know her as a member. Uh, I have known her at her office at ENO. So many times we interacted. She was very pleasant to her clientele. You know, those who come and to the ENO office, she will attend to them. She's always very gentle, very Christ-like, and she will just reach out to them, and then she'll say, Pastor, wait. Her wait is always very gentle, wait, but not too long. Always she will get back. Someone so special, but she was taken away. In the midst of, she was having prayer meeting, private prayer meeting over the Zoom, you know, uh, with her beloved family member. So we don't know. The person that sits on your right or on your left, we don't know. Life could be very short and we don't know when the person will be taken away. And so we ought to learn to do this, all right? The Bible says that if the Lord's will, we shall live and do this or that, you know? Seek out the will of God, the plan of God, the purpose of God. I know where she is. She's in heaven. In the arm of Jesus. I know where she is because the way she lived her life on earth. You know, as a pastor, I endorse the way she lived her life. I even end up in Penang Park. I remember one time. We went to Penang Park to watch an evening presentation. Without even making any prior arrangement, uh, she got two tickets and she was seated right in front. Just one level, one seat lower. We were higher. So we greeted, we talked. And then there was this interval, we talked again. And then there was this, when everything was over, we say bye-bye. So my knowing her is not on the surface. We have conversation, topic that, which are common, and then, and so on and so forth. And she is always very, very special. Very, very special. I do miss her. Every now and then, I, I think about her, you know. And I also think about many that have gone on to be with the Lord. How short life is. Do you know how short life is? You blink your eyes, the Bible says, 
and it's as though like a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. I've got a video clip to talk about the brevity of life. Shall we look at the video clip? Her whole life is being illustrated beautifully. But it's going to be the same journey that you and I, we will embark as well someday. Okay? You know, Jacob, when Pharaoh asked him, when Pharaoh asked him, hey, you know, how have you been? Genesis, can I have that verse? Genesis, Jacob said to Pharaoh, you know, Pharaoh asked him, how have you been? This is what Jacob described. He says that the days of the years of my pilgrimage on earth are 130 years. And then he described his entire life journey. Hey, the person that produces the 12 tribes of Israel, which will become the nations of Israel, and produces King David, and produces King Solomon, and finally produces who? The Messiah to the whole world. Now, how, what kind of a life did he uh, live, you know, or experience while he was on earth? The word pilgrimage is referring to the walk that he had with God, okay? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, the days of the years of my pilgrimage are 130 years. Pharaoh, the king, pay attention to Jacob, an elderly man. And he says, Feel and evil have been the days of my years on my life. And they have not attended to the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. My life has not been easy, Jacob says. You know, I have got my share of hard knocks in life and all that. 120, 130. That's what he says. So the Bible tells us this, that we need to learn to number our days. Okay? We need to number our days. Can I have the book of Psalm? God says that, learn to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So we need to learn to understand there's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There is this beginning and there will be also this end of the journey, life journey. But you and I, we need to redeem our time. Do everything we can to live our life in such a way. Now, I need to take you to the book of this uh, James now from Ephesians, okay? The book of James, that it talks about how shall we redeem the time? Okay? Verse, verse 13. Come now, you who said, today or tomorrow, we go to such a place, such a city. Spend a year there, buy and sell, make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen. What is your life? Okay? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, the Lord's will, and we shall live, do this or that. Now, you boast in your ignorance. All such boasting is evil. Okay? So here, we compare with the book of Ephesians. It talks about redeem the time. Here, it talks about you don't know what to expect. So you need to learn to live your life in such a way that Always do this one thing. How do you redeem it from now on? Don't live according to your desire, but live according to what is the will of God to redeem the time. Because someday, you're going to see Him face to face. Okay? Now, Romans chapter 14, verse 7 to verse 8 tells us this. For none of us live to Himself. No one dies to Himself. Whether we live or we die, we live and die to the Lord. What does that mean? 
while we are on earth living, we live unto the Lord, we are accountable to the Lord. The day will come when we die, we will have to stand before Him to give an account. So none of us will live to Himself, and no one dies to Himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or we die, we are of the Lord. It's so important to realize that we are only here on earth, temporarily. There's a life ahead of us, which will be forever and ever and ever and ever. Now, I would like to highlight to you that all of us, we are given the same amount of time. Can I have that 24 hours? 24 hours, if you translate into one day, it is 1,044 minutes, 86,400 seconds. Non-refundable, non-renewable. That's given to us. How shall you live? Have you ever thought about that? You know, how are you going to live your life in such a way? You know, we live our life based on James chapter 4. This is how we live. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desire of pleasure, that war in your members? You lust, you do not have. You murder, you covet, you cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, and that you may spend it on your pleasure. Adulterers and adulteress, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says it's in vain, the spirit who dwelleth in us yearns jealously? Here, 24 hours, constantly we have this thought. Okay, there's this conflict, there is this, what do you call that, evil thought. We, we fight, we want to get things for ourselves. And then what happens is we spend our time keep asking, keep going after the elusive dream, keep chasing after the things of the world. We live in the flesh, we commit, you know, in our thoughts, adultery uh, and so on and so forth. And we are a friend to the world. So we spend practically 24 hours, 1,440 minutes, eight 6,400 seconds. Basically, it's just, you know, we live in our pride, we promote strife. So how do we turn around to redeem the time? James give us this advice. But he gave us more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, he gives grace to the humble. Verse 7, therefore submit yourself to God. To redeem the time you learn by recognize he is God. And you stop all this, okay? Wars and fighting internally, as well as desire for pleasure, lust, at the same time, covetousness, at, at the same time, you know, us amiss, adultery, friendship with the world. You don't try to fight it, but you rather, you choose to submit yourself to God because God is in you. If you learn to submit yourself to God, all this will just, in a way, quiet down. The more you fight it, the more you find that you get yourself entangled all over. Your hand, your feet, your thought, your mind, your ear, your nose, you know, your mouth. Every part of you is being entangled. But God has given us a way out. How to redeem the time to begin with. He gives more grace. Therefore, He says, God resists the proud. By not submitting to God, wanting to do it our way and try to redeem the time, we are called proud. But He gave grace to the humble. Therefore, submit yourself to God. When you submit yourself to God, when you resist the devil, he will flee from you. You know, all these temptations that come around you and trying to entangle you suddenly will lose its strength, suddenly will lose its power, so suddenly not able to dominate over you. And then when you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. So, James said, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. He knows. On one hand, we want so much to redeem the time. We want to live for God, serve, serve God. But on the other hand, we are double-minded. You know, the moment we turn our back, you know, after service, it's like we go back to the same old pattern. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Let men and moan and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. Hallelujah. So, 
This is exactly what he said. You know, James said, don't boast about tomorrow. Yes. Paul says, life, days are evil. But James is saying that for life is like a vapor, appears for a little while. So what we need to do is, we need to learn to know the will of God and learn to be wise. How do we learn to be wise? Simply this, okay? We learn to be wise by, you know, Matthew, it says that the wise man and the foolish man. Can I have that scripture verse? The wise man and the foolish man. The wise man and the foolish man, one built his house upon the rock. And the rain descend and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. It did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. It's your house, it's your life founded on the rock. Founded upon Jesus, upon, upon the teaching of Jesus. The following verse. But everyone who hears this saying of mine, that means the word of Jesus and does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. This scripture verse has never been so real to me until lately. Years ago, when I read this scripture verse, it's as though, huh? Who would ever build a house, and then later on, the entire house collapsed within a short while, blinking of an eye. But now it happens. You know, TikTok, and social media. So often we see once, you know, places which is so safe in Japan, places which are so safe, uh, you know, the housing estate and all that, suddenly when the flood came, the entire house can collapse. Not only that, the floods can carry the, the cars away, the properties away. It's very scary, isn't it? That's what happened when we built our house upon the sand. We need to say, not upon the word of Jesus, but upon the proposals of the world. Okay? Go after popularity. Go after recognition. Go after man's approval. You know? Be at the top. You know? And accumulate as much wealth as possible. Forget about going to church. Don't bother about tithing. You know? What is this over nations and kingdom uh, teaching? Forget about it. The Bible says the day will come when the flood came, when judgment came, when that day of appointment. Because the Bible says that none of us will live, we live to ourselves. We live to the Lord. And when we die, we die in the Lord. The day will come, a day will come, a day will come. And everything will be revealed. Are you, it's a life built upon the rock, upon, upon, or upon the, the sand. Okay? Now, uh, there's another scripture verse in the book of Luke. I would like you to look into the book of Luke that it speaks about this rich man. He built upon his desire. Okay? The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentiful. You can see it. Wow. My bank interest is multiplying. My share investment is increasing. I can see the numericals multiply so many times. And now from a millionaire, I become a billionaire. He saw the yield, the ground, okay? He, til he, he tilted, you know, plentifully. And he thought within himself saying, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? Let's move on. And so he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. I'll stash away in this bank and that bank and this bank and that bank. I've got foreign account in Singapore. I also have the foreign account in Australia. What else, you know? Uh, anyway, I'm pretty safe. For the next two generations, there shouldn't be any problem. He built his treasure, the scripture says, his security upon you know, the things that he can see based on his five senses. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. 
following verse. But God said to him, the timing, we are only on earth as a pilgrim. That's why Jacob used the word pilgrimage. I'm only on earth temporarily. Okay? Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? Same thing. The question is being put forward to us. So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. I know so many of you, so many, so many, so many, and I'm very touched that you lay up treasure, you lay up treasure and you are rich towards God. That's wonderful. I want you to know that as a church, we also do whatever we can, whatever God has blessed the church with because you brought the tithing and the offering to the church. And so we do whatever we can to help the people around us. For example, Pastor Terence that came, Terence Sinadure that came, he has to feed uh, the, all, the orphans about, and the poor about 120 of them every month. And so the last time when he came, that was about two weeks ago, we gave him a big offering a real big offering because they bought a property that they still need about 160000 So we gave as much, but not the full sum. And to tell him that, you know, we are with you. We are with those poor and needy and the orphans. We as a church, not just as an individual, we want to lay up treasure and reach towards God. But I'm so thankful to Penang first, you know, so many of you, you have contributed time and again, time and again, time and again. Hallelujah. Would you give a clap to your neighbors and help me to appreciate them? That's right. And Pastor Terrence keeps saying this to me is I felt so embarrassed. Privately, he said, I've never, ever in my ministry received so much before. Never, ever. I've never received so much. And so, I was just, you being my senior, You've been to so many places. So I'm sure you have been to big, big occasion. But he keeps saying, your church is very special. Very honored. Thank you. Thank you so much. But I would like to give God the glory. I would like, give the, I would like to give the credit back to all of you. It is because of your generosity. That's the reason why we can help the orphanage. Amen? Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Now, saying all this to let you know, we need to redeem the time because, number one, the days are evil, based on the book of Ephesians. Number two, don't get yourself entangled with, you know, all the, uh, the work of the flesh because life is very short. You, you will meet the Lord anytime you do not know. So meanwhile, what do we do? The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, let us hear the whole matter. Fear God, keep His commandments, for this is man's all. That means this is the entire duty of man. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. He has shown you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. All this is biblical teaching. But I need to wrap it up with some practical tips so that you will understand redeeming the time. What does that mean? Redeeming the time, it simply means this, okay? Don't do this. Number one, don't compare. So often, we want to redeem the time, but at the same time, we compare and we compete with one another. Don't compare. The more you compare, the more you will complain. So-and-so has got a bigger car, so-and-so has a bigger house, so-and-so has got a bigger bank account, so-and-so has got, you know, the children all go to prestigious university and all that. Don't compare. And then, don't complain. Because it won't get you anywhere. The more you complain, you're saying that God, you, ultimately, not fair. You're the one that didn't give it to me, Okay. When you compare, you will complain. And when you complain, you will criticize. And when you criticize, you will speak negatively. Hmm. Ha. Hmm. Hmm. Ha. 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 Hmm. You know, uh, I didn't say 
But you know what I'm talking about? Hmm and ha. Huh? Sometimes no need to say you look at it. Hmm. It's understood. And we say, uh, why? You think you're very clever? You're very smart? Huh? You think you, 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 you are better than me? Hmm. Uh, we didn't say it in words, but our hmm, ha is good enough. Huh? We snap them with a hmm and ha. And then we condemn. You know? What? La, that kind of a face also can become like that, like that, and get this, like that, like that. Worse, we condemn ourselves. I'm hopeless. I'm useless. I'm no good. I can never be amount to anything that's good. That's the lie of the devil. So when you start comparing, you complain, you criticize, you condemn, at the end of the day, it's spilled over and you condemn yourself and you condemn the people around you. Hey, you are a new creation in Christ, okay? You are a new creation in Christ. All things are passed away. All things become new. That's why that confession is very important that I'm who God says I am and what God says I have and I can do what God says I can do. But rather, how do we redeem the time? Pray. Pray to find out the will of God. Next, prioritize. Sometimes this word multitasking is no good. No good. We are so proud that we can multitask, you know, hear music at the same time, we can fiddle with a handphone. Now, our eyes are on the big screen. Uh, I don't know what else your leg is doing. Uh, uh, whether you're doing exercise or not, leap up and down, uh, up and down, up and down, up and down. We thought that multitasking is good. So we bring over into our everyday life. We become what? Everything. But we achieve nothing. We need to prioritize. You only have, come back to 24 hours, can I have that clock, that table, 24 hours, one day. Uh, 1,440 minutes and 86,400 seconds. One day. It's fair. Every one of us, we get that. All of us, we get that. None get more, none get less. But you have to prioritize, meaning to say, you have to be very selective. What do you want to do with it? You need to pray. Seriously pray and hear from God. And here, the Bible says, do the will of God and choose to be a wise builder, not a foolish builder. But pray, know the will of God, as James said, okay? Prioritize. Then you need to plan your day. You've got 24 hours. What is the most important thing you need to do? You plan. If you don't plan, no. It will go haywire, okay? The last one is you need to perform. Be ye doer of the words. If you don't do well of the words, you just, you know, merely, you say you have faith, Faith without work is what? Faith without work is what? Dead. Last thought I want to give with you. James chapter 4 verse 17. Therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him the scripture says it is a sin. You know you need to redeem the time. Okay, go back to, you, you don't want to compare. You shouldn't compare. You shouldn't complain. You shouldn't criticize. You shouldn't condemn. And you ought to pray, prioritize, and plan, and perform. And if you don't do that, then the Bible says that you're bound by that sin, okay? And you don't know how to redeem your time. Life is so short. Even when I look at the video, I was very, very touched about that little girl that grew up, you know? And then everything happened so fast. Everything happened so fast. Shall we stand? Hallelujah. Father, I want to thank you for every, every individual here as we are facing year end. How would our year end be? Lord, January until October 2023, maybe it has been very mediocre, but many of us in our hearts, we want to redeem the time for the year 2023. It's not too late because it is not how well we start, but how well we end. And also, we're going to get ready for 2024, the new year. So meanwhile, help us to pray. Help us to prioritize. Help us to plan. And help us to work our plan. Not only plan our work, but work our plan by performing. Lord, may you give everyone the determination. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, give them the determination and the strength. Hallelujah. Look at me. I want to speak to some individual just very quickly. Mothers with toddlers, mothers with little children. I know it sometimes can be very time-consuming. But I'll tell you, the toddler years can pass very fast. 
And if you skip it, you know, you always hand your baby to your grandmother, your mother-in-law, or whoever and all that. And after that, you will not have it back. Five years, seven years, when they go into primary school, you won't remember, uh, you know, how they look like, what they say and all that. You miss out those times of impacting them by speaking into their lives. Parents with teenagers, Sometimes the teenager growing up, it can be very challenging. They are becoming an individual and they got a mind of their own. You need to wait for the window of opportunity, parents, father and mother. Don't nag, but there will be opportunity. So you speak into them. I'm going to say this and you're going to say that, what? My pastor is wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. The answer is yes. Nagging will not help to the teenager. They are very special. They will be your future pillar in your family. They also will be the future leader of the church and society. You need to create the opportunity. Okay? Buy three gifts, nag once. Buy another three gifts, nag once. If you know what I'm talking about, I don't need to give a full lecture. Huh? You buy three gifts first, you know, uh, give, 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 and your teenager feel, oh, my parents love me. And you wait for the opportunity after that, zap, 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 after give for it. But you always zap, 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 you never give anything at all, or, or your time, you know, how would they know that you are for them? They are growing up to be individual. Uh, let all the teenagers say a big amen. I heard, I got a supporter, I got a supporter. Huh? So parents, love your teenager and very fast, very fast. Within a few years, you'll find, hey, suddenly they become 21 already. Suddenly they become, finish college, they are going out to work. Teenager, you are very special. This one, your parents can't do it for you. You have to make the decisions to want to be a follower and a disciple of Jesus. He will be your one and only model. The world will try to compete for your attention. Taylor Swift will try to compete for attention. Okay? Ed Shireen, was it? Did I get his name right? Will try to compete for your attention. Many more. The K-pop groups too. But you know that they are not the model. Some of them are now being, 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 being caught because of drugs and immorality. But you make up your mind. You grow up in a church that Jesus is my Lord, Master, King, and my model. Amen, teenager? Hallelujah. When you go to college, when you go to university away from home, your parents can't be with you, but Jesus will be with you in your examination hall. Jesus will be with you in your lecturing hall. Jesus will be with you anywhere you go, and He will be there for you. Okay? Let me speak to those who are retired, okay? And you have got so much time in your hand. Life is still so much ahead of you. You won't, you won't suddenly disappear from the surface of the earth by tomorrow. You probably have another 10, 20 years. You may not start well because you came to know the Lord much later. But you can end well by serving the Lord. Church has got a lot of opportunity for you to serve by being an ashes, by being a helper. So many things, if you only approach some of our pastor staff and board members, he says, I'm available. You know, I've got so much time. Sometimes I go to Island Glades for breakfast. I see some of the elderly people. They always sit together, same spot, same group of people, same face. And then they always talk about the same thing. But at the end of the day, it's like so gloomy because to them, it's the world is... It's, it's, so, it's, it's full of wars and, you know, and conflicts and all that. But we who know the Lord, hallelujah. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand. You can serve the Lord if you volunteer yourself. Trust me, those of us, we are after 50, 55, we still got energy, we still got the strength, we still got the wisdom, and just inform the office. I'm available. There are a lot of things we can do. Must not be choosy, okay? If you want to serve God, must not be choosy. I'm not choosy. 
I still wash toilets. I do. Not the toilets at home, the toilets in the church. If you want me to be very upfront, when I go to 286, I check all the toilets. What I do is I use the hose. I don't clean. That's not my job. I don't brush. That's not my job. I don't scrub. That's not my job. I know. Okay? But I don't go and look around, touch the wall. Is it dusty? Ah, dusty. Got holes inside. I, on the holes, I spray the wall of the toilets, everyone, and I spray the floor, make, making sure that it's not dusty. So that the new group that come in, the baptismal candidates, you know, and that they find that the toilet is clean without dust. I make sure that the vanity top, you call that what? Basin? Uh, at 286 by Kelly Road at the back. Likewise, too, it's not my job to scrub, to clean, to wash, but I spray it with water and let it drip dry so that I want the baptismal candidates to come when they use it, they feel that it's so clean, it's dust free. Yes, I do that. You know, and it's not below my dignity. I'm serving God. You too can serve God. Amen. There's so much that can be done. You know, you can still serve God. You have, you, you, the opportunity will be given to you. Some of you, if you are musicians at the age of 50, 60, come on, join the group. You know, be on stage and play the instrument. Go through the auditions. Some of you, uh, you, know, you got always a friendly disposition. You can get involved in what? Ushering. Hallelujah. The world may consider you a flop and a dropout and you're nobody and they don't want you. But the house of God welcome you. Hallelujah. Amen. The house of God is saying that you are somebody and you can be used by the Lord. If Jesus can use a donkey, Jesus can use you because you are anytime better than the donkey. How many of us, we are better than donkey? Can I see your hand? Amen. That's right. We are better than donkey. Jesus says, go and look for the donkey and bring it so that I can ride on it and go into Jerusalem. But here we have so many of us, you know, and God can use every one of us. Redeem the time. It's not just words, but it is action. Okay? You need to pray, prioritize, plan, and then do it. Work your plan, plan your work. And serve God, hallelujah, until you see Him face to face. The days are evil, life is short, we don't know what to expect. But we start from here, right now where we are, we can serve God. We can love God with all our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. Let me hear a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand again. Father, I thank you and I praise you for the multitudes of the believers here. Lord, that all of them, one heart and one mind, they are saying that we want to put away the deeds of darkness, hatred, unforgiveness, complaining, criticizing, murmuring. But instead, we want to do this one thing. We want to live in the light of Jesus and to be the light of Jesus, hallelujah, to the world around us. Father, you see hands being raised everywhere. Put the burden and the love within them that they will end well. Hallelujah. Yes, they will run this race, redeem the time. And Lord, make 2023 worthwhile as we end. And make 2024 a new one, a meaningful one, a challenging one, one that will take them, hallelujah, from faith to faith, from strength to strength, from hope to hope. To God be the glory. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Amen.